channel called? It's called Doc Kids. What's my main Facebook page called? The, my original Doc Kids. When did I ever, ever, ever tell anyone that I am a U.S. Marine? When did I ever say that I am a U.S. Marine? Co re I'd go on reconnaissance missions and different types of, of combat missions that were hush hush and, and top secret and and just almost die so many times in training and in the missions themselves and almost fell off of a mountain one time we were walking across a thin ledge and just by the grace of God I was able to, to reach up and grab a hold of a tree on my way down that was growing out of the mountain to be able to hang onto a branch and to be able to, to live and surviving uh, massive fires that, that are coming down on us, forest fires and stuff. One thing that I despise of is lies. I don't like people that lie. I don't like liars. I did 20 years with the U.S. Marines. Marine Recon was my unit. See my hat? That's Marine Recon for those who don't know what it is. I have the inside information. I have the inside scoop. I have the facts. Didn't retire that long ago. And I still have a lot of contacts in the military, in the spec ops community. The spec ops, for those who don't know, are Navy SEALs, Marine Recon. Let me ask you all a question. Would you rather keep listening to a bunch of clueless people spouting off the mouth or hear from an actual numerous frontline combat, Marine Recon combat veteran who actually has connections and has a background in the way he's talking about? That's me, my friend. You will rarely find a message now on repentance. Look at what has become of the world, Church of Christ, through you, losing what you should have been. But God waits for his people. God waits for his people. When will they take the stepping stones God has placed in his word? Church that has forgotten its foundations, a church that's turned away from its beginnings and begins to become a harlot church. Just just tell me how blessed I am. Just tell me I'm, I'm, I'm going to be powerful and popular and going to have no trouble in my life. Just tell me these things. Watered down. Half-truths. Watered down. Half-truths. Deceptions, lies, and Satan is the father of all lies. YouTube, brothers and sisters, has become a melting pot of lies and deception, and Satan is using the internet airways and he's using YouTube and he's using people through lies and through deception. The Word of God. Is the truth the words of Yeshua the words of Jesus is the voice of truth you can't mix the two you can't bring truth and mix it in with lies of Satan hopefully I am done now I have to get this behind me this nightmare has to end regarding Paul Kidd I want to bring the truth here. When we are called to ministry and we have a YouTube channel and we have a following and a fellowship, a flock, we must be held to a higher level of accountability. I don't know how many times I have to repeat myself. Our viewers and our subscribers, they must know that when we bring them, what we say is a word from God or a message from the Holy Spirit that we can trust them to be telling us the truth, to stand on God's word and Jesus's voice, the voice of truth. I have been viciously myself, ridiculed, belittled, attacked, uh, character assassination, by one Paul Kidd, Doc Kidd, who claims to be a man of God. But not only myself, he has attacked 
he has belittled, he has ridiculed the very body of Christ. What this video is about is about the truth. We can't have both. In a minute, joining me on the phone will be a United States Marine Recon veteran. And we are going to bring you the truth. I have done as I have been instructed to according to the living word. I have went to Paul Kidd and Doc Kidd in private numerous times in the past. Yesterday, I made another attempt to go to him in private and with witnesses. I did a video also, hoping he would see this and contact me. I, I contacted him and of course, no response. So now I'm gonna do as instructed by the scriptures. I'm going to bring him before the church. I have to think of the New Testament and uh, the Apostle Paul. He dealt with this with the early church as well. And he made it clear, brethren, do you not know that we are to judge angels? His people are say, stop judging. Do you know that we are to judge angels? Brethren, let God judge those outside of the church. We are to judge those within the church. I'll be right back with my special guest. All right, I have on the phone with me, he is a, a, a former Marine uh, veteran, and I want to introduce him now. Are you, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Would you like to state your name? And uh, why are we doing this? Why is this so important that we put this video out? My name is Ken Cole, and I am a uh, Marine veteran. I served, uh, was assigned to uh, 2nd Reconnaissance Battalion from uh, 1990 to 1992. And uh, I had seen videos where Paul Kidd uh, had claimed uh, to be, he was claiming to be a Marine uh, or uh, Special Forces uh, qualified Marine reconnaissance marine he wore shirts that has the insignia of the uh, first force reconnaissance company first marine division uh, he wears a uh, parachute and diver insignia which uh, indicates that uh, he received the uh, training necessary to serve uh, either with a uh, marine uh, force recon unit or as a uh, special amphibious reconnaissance corpsman and so uh, I tried to contact uh, Paul Kidd to ask him about it. At first thinking that uh, we may have actually served together at one point, but I never got a response. And so I started uh, doing a little bit of investigating and discovered that uh, in order to uh, obtain uh, the evidence uh, for that type of uh, classification and, and uh, training and service, uh, in, in the special forces community that I would have to file a freedom of information act request uh, which I did and that's what you did and and it, it was you I just want to make it clear it was uh, Ken Cole that uh, uh, requested the uh, freedom of information act uh, uh, Paul Kidd Doc Kidd's military background and forwarded it to me so we could uh, put it up here and you're upset because you're a former marine and uh, his t lies and his this being untruthful and from the church standpoint we have to look at this is a man that is not bringing the truth he's mixing uh, Satan is the father of all lies he's mixing lies he's mixing the truth with lies and we we you know we've got to be held accountable yeah and, you know as a former Marine uh, I, I have every uh, respect and admiration uh, uh, for other service members, especially uh, uh, corpsmen, um, et cetera. But uh, to, make, to make the claim that uh, you were actually, initially, uh, I was led to believe that he was a Marine, and then to find out uh, he was a corpsman, 
uh, I just started questioning whether or not uh, he did actually have have the special operations training. Uh, and, and everyone, but, everyone, uh, he led to believe that he never mentioned the Navy. He still today doesn't mention his Navy career, which is an outstanding span of 20 years of serving this country in the Navy, and he should be um, just uh, so proud of that. But he will not mention that. And it was through you and I we uncovered and got him to finally admit that he wasn't a Marine, and that he was a Navy doc. But the problem is he's still claiming that he had all the special training to serve alongside uh, special operations. And he has videos out where he jumped from a plane, he was a paratrooper, and the chute didn't open, and he's hanging on a cliff and uh, uh, claiming that he was a Navy diver, and we know that this is not true, and we have to present this. Not only for you, but for the church, so they can see that they have been lied to. I just want to try to get it wrapped up in, in quickly. Correct. So, do you want to go to, uh, now you've obtained his, uh, and what is it called? It's the DD-214? Yes, I received uh, documents from the uh, Department of the Navy, Navy Personnel Command, which included a, a redacted copy of uh, Kit's uh, D214, uh, as well as uh, listings of uh, his assignments uh, to Navy and Marine Corps units, uh, and uh, a listing of his uh, education receipt. Okay. Do you want to go right to the documents now, and uh, just so we can show, and we just got to bring the truth out. Sure. All right, and uh, everyone, I will be right back. All right, we're at page one, and uh, let everybody know what we're looking at here. Page one is the cover page sent from the Department of the Navy National Personnel Command. And basically, it acknowledges that they have uh, completed my request and are, and are responding to me. Uh, it's just basically showing that, uh, that I sent them a Freedom of Information Act request, and, and they've processed it and, and included... Uh, documents uh, related to Paul Kidd that, that, they were, that were releasable. And there's no private personal information, social security numbers, address, telephone numbers, uh, which we wouldn't present anyway, but that's not uh, on there. No. No, this is the, the, the main form, uh, you know, all the, all that type of information uh, has been redacted or deleted, so uh, that's to protect uh, Paul Kidd. Okay, now let's move ahead. Where do we want to go next? We need to go to page four next, uh, which would be the, the redacted copy of his uh, D214, his release to charge from active duty. Oh. Uh, if you go to the top left, hang on, let me go, let me pull it up. Let me go there real quick. I'll be right back. And here's page four. Okay, on page four at the uh, top left corner, you can see that this is the uh, redacted uh, D214 of. Uh, Paul Kidd uh, shows that uh, his final pay grade, uh, his rank was HM1 uh, E6, uh, active duty U.S. Navy. Right. Um, if you go to uh, box 12 there, uh, record of service, you can see that uh, Paul Kidd uh, enlisted uh, in the United States Navy Reserve uh, in 1983, October and re-enlisted in uh, October of 86. Right. And uh, Section 11, where his primary specialties here are listed uh, as uh, 8404, uh, field medical service technician, 19 years, three months. Uh, 9502, uh, instructor, two years, one month. And what I'd like to uh, point out here is that uh, had he been uh, Special Forces qualified, uh, he would have received other designations, uh, you know, a four-digit number called the uh, Navy Enlisted uh, Classification. And uh, more than just being a hospital corpsman, I mean, for a hospital corpsman to serve uh, in a Special Operations Unit or a Marine uh, Force Reconnaissance Unit, 
uh, he would have had to complete uh, more extensive training, of what, what they refer to as, as a pipeline oh. of different training schools he would have been required to attend. Uh, and this would have, would have taken uh, approximately two years, which in addition to uh, Navy Hospital Corpsman Field Medical Training uh, with the Marines that, that he did have, uh, he would have also had to been qualified um, as a uh, Fleet Marine Reconnaissance Corpsman uh, 8427 that would have been listed there, and uh, 8403 Fleet Marine Reconnaissance uh, Independent Duty Corpsman, which are both required to serve with Special Operations Units. Right. Um, and if you go to uh, uh, Section 14 where it says Military Education, Yes. You'll see it's listed Hospital Corpsman Basic, Field Medical Service Technician, uh, and Hearing Conservation Techniques. Now the first two um, were required uh, just for uh, the uh, 8404 uh, HM uh, basic for, you know, to become a basic corpsman. Right. Um, but in addition to that, had he been special operations qualified, he would have had to attend uh, the Marine Basic Reconnaissance Course, uh, SEER Training, Survival, Evasion, Resistance, and Escape, uh, Marine Combat and Diver Course, Army Basic Airborne Course, Army Special Operations Combat Course, Navy Special Operations Independent Duty Corpsman Course. Now those uh, schools, those, that training uh, should have been listed there in, in uh, Section 14, but they are not, which indicates he never received that training. So, and without that training, he can't uh, lay claim that uh, 20 years frontline uh, combat duty with the Marine uh, recons and special forces. And uh, as far as being a, a, a Navy diver and, and a paratrooper, because he's laid claim that he jumped out of a plane and the chute didn't open. And uh... That's correct. And if you go to uh, Section 13, where his decorations uh, <clears throat> and awards are listed, badges, uh, etc. You'll see that there is no listing for naval parachutist uh, badge or uh, basic diver badge, right. which which also confirms uh, that he never received uh, parachute or diver training at you know, two of the required schools for a special amphibious reconnaissance corpsman. Right. So we've established that uh, that is a fabrication that he did not serve in frontline combat 20 years alongside the Marine uh, recons and, and special forces, such as Navy right. SEALs. And, and All right, where do you want to move on from here? Did you want to, where did you want to continue at? Okay, we need to, uh, we need to go to page six, where I'd just like to point out uh, a couple things on page six. Page six uh, is one of uh, a number of pages uh, that were released that simply shows, uh, you know, his history of assignments. Let's go there now. Let me, let, let me uh, quickly go there, and uh, then we can uh, pull that up, okay? Okay. All right, now we uh, are on page six, so go ahead. Yeah, page six is uh, one, one page of uh, showing a, a, a chronological listing of all his... Uh, assignments uh, throughout his career uh, with both the Navy and Marines. Uh, you see the first entry here regarding the, the 2nd Marine Division Fleet Marine Force there. Uh, he had served with, with them for uh, two years, eight months, uh, from January 88 to September of, of 90, uh, which is consistent with uh, <clears throat> service during uh, uh, Panama from December 89 to February 1990. Right. And there's another listing, uh, 1st Marine Division Fleet Marine Force, um, from January 91 to March 91, uh, two and a half months, uh, consistent with uh, serving during the uh, Operation Desert Storm. Um, and from all this chronological listings of his duty assignments, etc., uh, the breakdown of the 21 years three months total to serve. He served 17 years with Navy units and four years with Marine units. So 
about one fifth of his time was spent with uh, Marine units, Marine infantry units. So let me make sure we have this, uh, so everybody understands. Seventeen years was with, with the Navy, and uh, maybe a little over four years with a with a, a Marine division, but not. He wasn't eligible. He wasn't trained. He was with maybe the Marine Infantry, but not Marine Recon and no Special Forces whatsoever because he didn't have the qualifications or the training. So we, we're looking at a little over four years with just the Marine Infantry units rather than Marine Recons for the span of almost his whole 21-year career. Is that correct? That's correct. He has, he has made uh, the statement several times that uh, most of his time uh, most of his career was served uh, with the Marines, uh, and and that's not accurate because uh, you can see that there's uh, four years with the Marines, 17 uh, with the Navy. Right. Anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? Uh, no, I think uh, that's pretty much it. Other than, uh, you know, I have a tremendous amount of uh, respect and admiration for kids' service. I want people to understand that. Right, and I do as well. It was, it was my uh, issue with uh, his claim of being special operations, uh, special forces qualified, <clears throat> serving with the uh, Marine Force Recon units, as he's claimed. And uh, unfortunately, that there's just no evidence for that. All right. Uh, let's, we're going to come right back and we're going to wrap it up. All right. All right, to wrap this up, uh, I just want to begin by saying that only God and only Paul Kidd knows why Paul Kidd, Doc Kids, has this obsession with uh, the Marine Recon and the Special Forces. When he had, uh, I know you're on the phone, Ken, when he had a stellar career, 21 years in the United States Navy, something to be very proud of and and I commend him for his service to this country. Absolutely, I, I agree totally with, uh, I respect and admire kid uh, as a former Marine, uh, you know, we all love our corpsmen and, <laughs> and we protect our corpsmen and I have nothing but uh, respect for, for Paul Kidd's 21 years of service, four years taking care of Marines, you know, but unfortunately there's no evidence to substantiate uh, his claims of, of being uh, qualified uh, uh, special amphibious reconnaissance corpsman or being assigned to a, a force uh, marine reconnaissance unit uh, whatsoever. And the bottom line, to wrap it up, the bottom line is he had made the claim of 20 years on frontline combat with the marine recons and being a, a paratrooper uh, special training, special forces, a, 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 a Navy diver, when we just brought you the truth. And uh, he spent, uh, was it uh, four years with the Marine infantry, but not with uh, uh, special forces. He was in combat, but he was not on the front lines all of the time that he claims uh, with, the, with special forces and with recon. That about right? And the final bottom line is, again, he has a lot of viewers, a lot of followers. And when you come on here and you portray yourself to be uh, a leader in a leadership position with ministry, you cannot bring lies into the house of God, let alone the attacks that he has on the body of Christ. He has viciously attacked so many people humiliated them, belittled them, not even including what he has done to me in the past. He's bringing damage to the body of Christ. We've got to have the voice of truth, and I believe uh, that's what we've uncovered today. And my final word, what Paul Kidd is selling, none of us are buying. Thank you, Ken.